Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning. I'd like to thank the University of Texas at El Paso uh, for the opportunity to be here. I have my miners pin on. And recognize your terrific president, uh, Representative Reyes, El Paso Mayor John Cook, I know, is here. Yuma Mayor Alan Krieger, I'm told, is here. And that there are more than uh, a dozen uh, sheriffs and police chiefs uh, from alongside the border are present here this morning. Thank you for uh, being here. Now, it was uh, just about uh, last year at this time uh, when I was, uh, well, on this campus, uh, and we announced uh, the Southwest Border Initiative. Uh, Southwest Border Initiative is an unprecedented effort by the Obama administration to bring focus and intensity to Southwest border security, coupled with a reinvigorated, smart, and effective approach to enforcing immigration laws in the interior of our country. We are almost two years into that strategy, and the verdict is in. The verdict is that our approach is working. We have strengthened the Southwest border in ways that many did not think possible. And our partnership with Mexico along the border is very strong. Now that's not to say we don't still face challenges. We are deeply concerned about the drug cartel violence taking place in Mexico. We know that these drug organizations are seeking to undermine the rule of law, especially in northern Mexico, and that we must guard against spillover effects into the United States. Nevertheless, it is inaccurate to state, as too many have, that the United States side of the border is, is overrun with violence or out of control. This statement, often made to score cheap political points, is just plain wrong. Not only does it ignore all the statistical evidence, it also belittles the significant progress that effective law enforcement has made to protect the border and the people who live alongside it. Now, as was mentioned, I know this border well. I was raised in New Mexico. I have spent most of my adult life in Arizona as the United States Attorney, Attorney General, and as a two-term governor. I have walked the border, I have flown it, I have ridden it on horseback, I have worked with border communities from Brownsville to San Diego, San Diego for the better part of 18 years as a public official. So I speak from personal experience when I say that the Southwest Border Initiative is the most comprehensive and dedicated effort to strengthen border security that we have ever deployed. The border as a whole is simply not the same as it was two years ago or even one year ago in terms of the manpower and resources and technology we deploy in terms of the relationships we have built with our federal, state, local, and tribal partners and in terms of our strong partnership with Mexico. So what's our goal? Our goal is to have a safe, secure border zone that is hospitable to and fosters legal trade, travel, and immigration. Our goal recognizes that the border is not simply a line on a map. It's an entire area extending into both countries. Moreover, a safe, secure border zone requires vigorous enforcement of our nation's immigration laws in the interior of our country as well. Now, security starts along the border by leveraging every law enforcement asset and coordinating them in a way that acknowledges that our approach in El Paso may differ from a tactic we use in San Diego. Enforcement in the interior of our country must be aggressive and smart. This means going after criminals and employers who knowingly hire illegal workers, as we have, and doing so in a way consistent with our values and our priorities. And then finally, our border policy fosters legitimate trade, travel, and immigration 
accommodating the movement of commerce from which the United States and Mexico derive trade and tourism revenue and which drives literally hundreds of thousands of jobs in the United States. So that's our philosophy, that's how we do it, those are our goals. This common sense approach coupled with the tireless dedication of the thousands of men and women on the front lines has achieved historic decreases in illegal immigration, unprecedented increases in the seizure of drugs, weapons, and contraband, and record numbers of deportations of individuals in the United States illegally, both overall and in terms of criminal aliens. This approach has also led to strengthened and increased partnerships with Mexico in trade and travel and an increase in the associated trade revenue. Now, the Southwest Border Initiative. It was clear from the outset of this administration that we needed a reinvigorated approach to border security and immigration enforcement. So in March of 2009, we launched the Southwest Border Initiative. We increased the size of the Border Patrol to more than 20,700 agents today, which is more than double the size it was in 2004. We doubled personnel assigned to Border Enforcement Security Task Forces, which worked to dismantle criminal organizations along the border. We increased the number of ICE intelligence analysts along the border focused on cartel violence. In all, a quarter of ICE's personnel are now in this region, the most ever. We quintupled deployments of border liaison officers to work with their Mexican counterparts, and we began screening southbound rail and vehicle traffic, looking for the illegal weapons and cash that are helping fuel the cartel violence in Mexico. With the aid of $600 million requested by the administration and passed by the Congress in the summer of 2010, we are continuing to add technology, manpower, and infrastructure to the border. This will include adding 1,000 new Border Patrol agents, adding 250 new CBP officers at our ports of entry, adding 250 new ICE agents focused on transnational crime, improving our tactical communication systems, adding two new forward operating bases to improve coordination of border security activities, and adding CBP unmanned aircraft systems. In fact, we have now instituted Predator unmanned aircraft system coverage along the entire southwest border, from the El Centro sector in California to the Gulf of Mexico in Texas. Now, in addition, President Obama authorized the deployment of 1,200 National Guard troops who are now actively assisting us in our work along the border. We announced $150 million in Operation Stone Garden funds in 2009 and 10 to help local law enforcement jurisdictions along the border. And in partnership with the DEA and the Department of Defense, we have achieved initial operating capability for the new Border Intelligence Fusion Section within the El Paso Intelligence Center, EPIC. And we're continuing to work with Mexico to develop an interoperable cross-border communications network to improve our ability to coordinate law enforcement and public safety issues. Now, Beyond these measures, in recent months, we've undertaken additional actions that I would like to speak about today because they are designed to bring greater unity to our enforcement efforts, expand coordination uh, efforts with agencies, including the Departments of Defense and Justice, and improve response times. For example, we have begun creating joint commands within CBP where previously they did not exist. This means instead of having the Border Patrol, then Air and Marine, then Field Ops, all reporting to different bosses within the same area of operation, they will now report to one single commander. This unified command structure is now being deployed in Arizona. We're also improving coordination with the military, where our missions overlap along the southwest border. And as part of the southwest border initiative, 
CBP has developed new mobile response teams to give us surge capability to send border patrol into a particular area of the border when needed. Now, as we take these steps, we are also bringing fiscal discipline to border security by doing away with expensive yet ineffective systems like SBI net, otherwise known as the virtual fence. Now this program began in 2005 as an attempt to provide a single unified technology consisting of fixed cell towers constructed alongside the entire border. But the program was consistently over budget, behind schedule, and simply not uh, delivering the return on investment needed to justify it. So we are now redirecting SBI net resources to other proven technologies, tailored to each border region to better meet the operational needs of the Border Patrol. This new technology deployment strategy is already well underway with resources invested through the Recovery Act and on the ground in communities all along the border. It includes non-intrusive inspection equipment at the ports of entry and tested commercially available technologies such as thermal imaging devices, ultralight detection, backscatter units, mobile radios, cameras and laptops for pursuit vehicles, and remote video surveillance system enhancements. So, what are the results? Taken as a whole, the additional manpower, technology, and resources represent the most serious and sustained action to secure our southwest border in our nation's history. And it's clear from every key measure that the approach is working. Border Patrol apprehensions, a key indicator of illegal immigration, have decreased 36% in the past two years and are less than one half of what they were at their peak. We've and as we've continued to combat illegal crossings, violent crime in border communities has remained flat or fallen in the past decade. And studies and statistics have shown consistently that some of the safest communities in America are right here at the border. Four of the nation's largest cities with the lowest rates of violent crime are in border states. San Diego, Phoenix, Austin, and right here in El Paso. Violent crime in southwest border counties have dropped by more than 30% and are currently among the lowest in the nation per capita. And crime rates in Nogales, Douglas, Yuma, and other Arizona border towns have remained essentially flat for the past decade, even as drug-related violence has dramatically increased in Mexico. Let me give some additional perspective. Imagine if the sheriff of a large county representing millions of residents from big cities and rural communities told you that he was able to reduce crime by 36%. You'd probably ask how he did it. Then you'd tell him to keep up the good work. Or if the police chief of an American city of 7 million people, which is about how many people live alongside our border, was able to do the same thing with crime, this would be considered a significant success. So let's stick with the facts and numbers when we talk about where we are at the southwest border. And we've matched the decreases in apprehensions with increases in seizures of cash, drugs, drugs, and weapons. Over the past two fiscal years, we've seized 35% more illegal currency, 16% more illegal drugs, and 28% more weapons compared to the two previous years. We need to be honest with the people we serve about what is and what isn't happening in our border communities. As I've said, we know challenges remain, but significant progress has been made, and that is echoed by leaders in our border communities. Now, two weeks ago, mayors and their representatives from 13 border cities met during a two-day summit in Tucson. Newly elected Mayor Arturo Carino from Nogales told his local newspaper that he went to the meeting to tell his colleagues how Nogales, though one of Amer Arizona's safest cities, gets unfairly portrayed as a dangerous place to live and to do business. And he quickly learned that his city was not alone. 
He said, quote, what I found out from the mayor from Laredo and the mayor from Brownsville and Mayor Sanders from San Diego is that they have the same thing. And almost everybody is hurting economically because of that perception. So we need to be upfront and clear about what's happening along our border. Our border communities are safe. We also need to send an unmistakable message to those who would threaten the safety and security of those border communities and feed a negative perception. So today I say to the cartels, do not even think about bringing your violence and tactics across the border. You will be met by an overwhelming response. And we are going to continue to work with our partners in Mexico to dismantle and defeat you. And that message extends to anyone considering coming across that border illegally, whether a smuggler, a human trafficker, or an unlawful immigrant seeking work. There are more Border Patrol agents along this border than ever before. There are more customs officers. There is more technology. Do not throw your lot in with the cartels or the criminal organizations, because the likelihood of getting caught and the consequences of doing so are higher than ever before. Now, as I said before, what happens at the southwest border is inseparable from immigration enforcement that arises in our country's interior. Our approach to the enforcement of our nation's immigration laws is based on the common sense premise that sound and based on sound prosecutorial practice implement the measures that best protect public safety and produce the most significant results. This approach focuses on identifying criminal aliens and those who pose the greatest risk to our communities and prioritizing them for removal. It involves making sure employers have the tools they need, like E-Verify, to maintain a legal workforce and face penalties if they knowingly and repeatedly violate the law. It involves having an immigration detention system that recognizes the basic differences between immigration violators, from families with small children to hardened violent criminals and gang members, and then treats them as such. And it includes having enough federal prosecutors and judges in our judicial system to handle the border-related workload. Now let me uh, pause here for a moment to note that earlier this month we lost one of our best and most respected federal judges as a result of the tragic shootings in Tucson. Judge John Roll he was serving as the chief judge for the District of Arizona. He was a fine jurist. He was a strong advocate for an effective immigration system and a good friend. One of his last acts was to work with Congresswoman Gabby Giffords to get more judges assigned to the southwest border to deal with the increasing caseload that has resulted from our unprecedented enforcement efforts. We will miss him dearly. Now, our interior enforcement efforts, just as they are at the border, are achieving major results. In both fiscal years 2009 and 10, Immigration and Customs Enforcement, ICE, removed more illegal immigrants from our country than ever before, with more than 779,000 removals nationwide in the last two years. More importantly, more than half of those we removed last year, upwards of 195,000, were convicted criminals, the most ever removed from our country in a single year. That's a, more, that's a more than 70% increase in removal of criminal immigrants from the previous administration. This surge in criminal apprehensions and removals didn't happen by accident. Since we don't have the resources to remove every single individual who is in the country illegally, like any good prosecutor or law enforcement organization, we set priorities and focus on those who present the biggest danger to our communities. Now, one of the most important steps in this regard is the Secure Communities Program, which has helped us to identify and remove tens of thousands of criminal aliens in state prisons and local jails by running their fingerprints against federal immigration databases when they get booked into the system. We have expanded Secure Communities 
from 14 jurisdictions in 2008 to more than 1,000 this week, including every jurisdiction along the southwest border. We expect to reach complete nationwide deployment by 2013. We've also stepped up labor enforcement, arresting a record number of employers last year who knowingly hire illegal immigrants. ICE has significantly expanded its use of I-9 audits, which are used to investigate employers suspected of using illegal labor. Since January of 2009, ICE has audited more than 3,500 employers suspected of hiring illegal labor, debarred 235 companies, and has collected approximately $54 million in fines, more than the total amount of audits and debarments during the entire previous administration. We've strengthened the accuracy and, and efficiency of E-Verify to assist employers in abiding by the law. This program continues to grow by more than 1,000 businesses a week. In addition, we've continued to reform our immigration detention system, making it easier for families and attorneys to locate people in custody and implementing new detention standards to ensure consistency and safety across the country. And we've improved our legal immigration system in many ways, making the systems more customer friendly and efficient. We are now processing applications for naturalization and other critical immigration benefits in record time, meeting or exceeding the goals that we have established. And we've put more information and resources online for easy access. And as we've done this, we have focused on growing the economy by expediting lawful travel and trade with America's second largest trading partner, Mexico. We've done this by continuing to expand trusted traveler programs, making infrastructure improvements to our ports of entry, and streamlining and modernizing our customs process. That's the Southwest border record. It's the result of the hard work of thousands of border patrol, ICE, CBP agents and officers, as well as our state and local partners. They deserve our nation's thanks and our nation's recognition. Now, while this progress is significant and important, we know there's more work to be done. So where do we go in the future? As important, how should we define success as we move forward? We need to agree on what we mean by a secure border and what our expectations are for achieving that goal. A secure border does not mean a sealed border with no commerce. It does not mean a border without challenges. When you have a 2,000 mile border encompassing some of the country's most rugged terrain, there will always be challenges. So just as no ma major city or town will ever eliminate all crime, Neither will we be able to resolve every issue, every time, all at once, along the border. But the reality is that our southwest border counties are home to 7 million people, and thousands of people cross legally every day. Others are determined to cross that border illegal, illegally, no matter what, no matter what, even at risk to their own lives. So that is a challenge, but it does not follow that America's border communities are out of control or overrun with violence. To the contrary, the numbers do not lie. And the numbers that are supposed to go up have gone up, and the numbers that are supposed to go down have gone down. Let me be clear. Violence, whether at the border or anywhere in this country, is tragic and it is unacceptable. Before Christmas, I attended the funeral of a Border Patrol agent who was killed in the line of duty. And unfortunately, he was not the first. Our men and women in uniform counter danger every day, and they put their lives on the line for their sake and for our country. We owe them every tool and every resource in our arsenal. Our dishonors the memory and the service of these heroes by misstating the facts and unfairly politicizing border issues. When something happens, we unite. We bring the perpetrators to justice. We work together to solve problems. That's what we do best. That's what we do as Americans. At the end of the day, we will set priorities with the resources we are given by the Congress. And as I said before, 
We don't have the resources to station a Border Patrol agent every few feet along our 2,000 mile border, nor do we have the resources to find and deport every person who is in our country illegally. This latter point is one of the many reasons why Congress needs to take up reforms to our immigration system to address long-standing systemic problems with our immigration laws. President Obama is firm in his commitment to advancing comprehensive immigration reform, and I am personally looking forward to working with the Congress to move the ball forward. But in the meantime, the Southwest Border Initiative, the Southwest Border Strategy, is working. Illegal immigration is decreasing, deportations are increasing, crime rates are dropping, and this work will only get stronger with comprehensive immigration reform. So I want to thank you, uh, and I want to thank again the men and women of federal, state, and local law enforcement, the National Guard, and others who are working every day and every night to protect and defend the country, often at great personal risk. Let us not undercut them or minimize their great work here in El Paso and across the country. We owe them our continued gratitude and our continued support. We owe them a border and immigration system that works. Thank you very much. Uh, but uh, uh, it's all a system, and it all goes together. And, and I cannot leave. We're going to do everything in our power to make sure this border zone is safe and secure and to keep reminding people that our communities along the southwest border are among the safest in the entire United States. Thank you very much.